Praise the Father. Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy love, loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be wither than snow, whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors the, thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasures unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall thy offer bullocks upon thine altar. This psalm is profound, and I find it very deep in uh, exposition or a display of the writer of this, presumably David, as being completely immersed in gratitude towards God, the Father. And I find it of great comfort, not only because of its significance in the uh, the manner of which it is written, but in how it is laid out. He's admitting that he has sinned against God, right? Most of us are all only concerned about how we are doing wrong to others or how others have wronged us or this or the other. But truly, we are doing, we're transgressing against the holiest. Every time we disobey, every time we're doing evil, or every time we have committed sin, it has been towards the Father, sinning against heaven. Yet, the Father is merciful. Amen. He is the only one that reneweth through His Spirit. 
Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. If we are not <clears throat> in recognition of this taking place, and we're still seeking by our own volition, by our own efforts, by our own cleverness and, quote, intelligence, end quote, we are going into darkness. Every time we think that we are worthy of something by our own rights, by our, 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 our born given quote unquote rights and unalienable rights and this and this and that and this and this, by the, the logic and reason in your brain, by the chemical firings of synapses and bashes and this, this is and that and that's and electrical impulses and it's all magnetism. And it's all just electrons and bash and smashing and it's just a biological bash machine. No. So, I, I wanted to read this and continue because this is, to me, and perhaps to others as well, a a reminder, an everlasting reminder. As long as as well as other psalms, mind you, but this one in particular, because it is a display of the quote unquote human experience. Anyone born, right? And David is talking here about being born in iniquity. Yet, it does not stop him from rejoicing in the Lord. And to recognize that to do the will of God is righteousness, not to go on seeking our own righteousness. Right? He's saying, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So, we like to think of ourselves as just innocent, somehow, by being born, and, well, we, you know, we're not born sinners, or this or that. Or we have to say, no, there's original sin and all this. Well, I mean, that in itself could be seen as perhaps a unnecessary debate because we either recognize the authority and righteousness of God or we're still seeking after our own righteousness and authority because even if <clears throat> we concede to the debate so called of original sin or this or the other we're going to fall into the snare of thinking ourselves righteous whether by borning, by being born innocent and then being corrupt or being born already just tainted and and there's no point, right? Why should I care? Why? How dare God create me if I was born in sin already and this, this? So, so it's a stumbling, a stumbling block, right? When in an honest, with an honest heart, one can see that man is either going to recognize the authority of God and submit to it, or he will continue in his own proud, boastful ways. Regardless of whether or not he engages in the debate of original sin or that or the other, but we have to recognize that there is such a thing as discernment between um, good and evil. But who is the authority over that? Is it man? Or just because we can perceive it doesn't mean that it originates in us or that just because we perceive it somehow we get to decide our future and this and this and that. So, I mean, it goes into a lot of things, but in the end, we're all serving in life, the life that is given. And most of us choose to serve ourselves in this life opposed to honoring 
our Heavenly Father and doing His will. For Jesus Christ came and uh, revealed once and for all the mystery which was hidden in God for times until the appropriate time when the Messiah would be revealed. And he did. And that is why the, our Lord is, of course, salvation. He is, and uh, thou God of my salvation, amen. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. What other righteousness is there to speak of? And of course, people will just boast about their good works and their good intentions and this and that and this and this and this and that. And that's called the ways of the world. But the way of God is of righteousness. God is good. God is light. God is love. And God is salvation. Of what? Well, of his creation that he loved disobeying. He is the salvation to that. And only through him was that redemption possible. No other way is possible. Yet man has convince himself that he is the savior that he that man himself is his own savior okay so let's look at something real quick what is this Syncretism. Syncretism. The amalgamation or attempted amalgamation of different religions, cultures, or schools of thought. Sounds a lot like ecumenical, ecumenism. The merging of different infectional varieties varieties of word of a word during the development of a language linguistics the merging of different infectional varieties of a word so like sounding words is that right or the root of this that or that blah, 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 blah. so this goes down you know back to the the story of the tower of babel right the Tower of Babel. The people, they were one, right? They spoke all. They all were communicating in one language. But what happened after? They were fragmented, split into their own little categories of cliques and quote-unquote cultures that we call, right? According to archaeology and bash, bash, bash. And these people were the Incas and these people were the bash Mayans. And these other bashes were somewhere, who knows what they were, but they were building the same type of bash structure. Pyramid this, pyramid that, ziggurat that, ziggurat this. Some sort of square or, or bash triangle, bash 3D dimension, bash structure that they just somehow used blocks. And somehow, we don't know how they did it, but levitation was involved in alien technologies and lost civilizations. And yes, yes, yes. Lost. Well, syncretism is syncretism behind it all. Because in the same sense of trying to make one of the fragments, well, the fragments mean that they were, I mean, just because you Obliter you smash a stone into obliterated thousands of little pieces. It still it still came from a hole, did it not? Of course. So, what is the body, if you will, of any type of 
like what this is saying, religions, cultures, schools of thought. Where does what is thought, right? And you say, well, it's Thoth, and he was Bash some Egyptian Bash Magi, and this is a lot of this is Bash Bash. It's just thought at the speed of thought. Who knew that thought was faster than light? And yes, light is light, but thought is thought. What is going on? There's the word of, of, of the Father, the word of God made flesh, right? Jesus Christ, okay, the embodiment of the invisible God, the image of the invisible God, Jesus Christ, amen. So what is the word if the word was with God and the word was God in the beginning, right? So the word brings forth the creation, right? The manifestation of God is the word made manifest. So in the story of Genesis, okay, well, through the word was creation brought forth. Well, what is the word? People say, well, first you need reason, and then the word comes. Well, in order to have reason, you need to know what the word is. What is the word? Without word, I mean, what is a word? You read this and you're like, syncretism, and I can look up the definition and look, it's this. So in order to understand what this means, you need to know what this means and this, right? And this, and this, and this. So you need to know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, right? It's endless. And then you say, it's called vocabulary, and it's called this, and it's called the pronoun, and the, the adjectives. And it's called grammar, buddy, didn't you know? Okay, well, those that structure, whether you speak Mandarin, English, Spanish, Italian, German, whatever, you, there still is a scaffolding, right, of words. What What structure is used? And you call it, well, it's just a phonetic sounds that come out of the throat with the tongue and this and somehow we can they're patterns okay they're patterns that they were that we recognize and we give meaning to them and we use them to describe things and bash 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 to predict and bash just to convey idea okay so the word somehow is is is, is uh kind of like the 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 portal right to many aspects of what we can determine to be descriptions, uh, communications, uh, definitions, meanings, blah, 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 all requiring your understanding. So in order for the word to be, there needs to be understanding. And without understanding, there is no word. And without word, there is no understanding. So it's one and the same. The word is reason. So... I've heard recently, you know, uh, uh, there's there's somehow this debate going on or or an, uh, an appear to be debate between if there was somehow the father first and then the son. If it's a metaphorical Jesus or it's it's if it if it's an actual literal son and this and this and therefore there has to be a father first and then the son comes and this all oh, about so what's going on? It can all be seen as a distraction because ultimately it's it's going it's this right it's either man and his corrupt ways and man recognizing that all the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God right it's either man recognizing the depths and the riches of both the wisdom and knowledge of god or boasting in his own apparent wisdom and riches what is what wisdom or riches do we have that we did not receive and if received by who did we receive it and you're like, oh, well, my professor buddy at buddy at buddy institute. Really? 
Okay, no. Everything that we have come to receive in this life comes from the Father. Whether we label it good or bad, we are alive by grace. So we are alive by grace, and whether we call our lives crappy or the most amazing, we have it. We have life. And that life has been given to us by our Father. And either we have the knowledge and wisdom of the flesh, or we have recognized that there is a difference between fleshly knowledge and heavenly knowledge that comes from the Father. And that is the whole purpose in my heart of the Holy Spirit is to fill a man with the Father's wisdom and understanding and cast out the fleshly understanding and wisdom of the flesh that only seeks your destruction. For through in the flesh we disobeyed, thinking that we could be as gods, thinking that we could be the the the, the perfect divider of creation, that we could divide creation as God did. No, only God can do that. Only God created. Only God creates. Only God is God. We are a creature in God's creation, formed from clay, given the breath of life. And yes, the first man was earthy, the second man from heaven. So in God's creation, there is redemption for the earthly man who rebelled and disobeyed his creator. And we have this life to either reconcile that or to exploit and abuse and just do as our will and have the God of the flesh as our God, meaning our bellies, meaning anything that we get to desire and lust after, we go for it and that's our God. Doctrine of Lucifer, doctrine of Satan, doctrine of passion and desire. So, what is going on? It's either the depth and the riches of both the wisdom and knowledge of God and how unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord or who hath been His counselor or who hath first given to Him and it shall be recompensed unto Him again. Recompensed unto him again for of him and through him and to him are all things to him to whom be glory forever amen so it's either this or man thinking that he's the end all be all and that somehow we are the savior guys sure jesus christ was an affable guru but he came to teach us how to be this he taught us how to be this guys don't worry. We're all gods and goddesses. So somehow we believe that we are creators. We created the universe because we perceive it and therefore we are. And therefore we're expansive consciousness that somehow are in this 3D, 4D, 5D s simulation that somehow just in, in our minds and somehow we can transcend it because mind over matter and blah, 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 smash, smash, smash. The infinite ideas and notions of uh, philosophical meandering and spiritual musing and syncretism, making of multiples, an amalgamation, a hybrid, a Frankenstein, if you will. And somehow boasting in it that somehow it's, yes, it's the knowledge of man and it's, 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 it's the intelligence of the cosmos. So... This is all going somewhere. All this apparent increase in, in, in 
uh, intelligence and knowledge, right? Because anybody who denies that there is an intelligence behind behind anything that they come to observe is a liar because there is an intelligence behind it. And be, just because we'd like to deny that, uh, that it comes from a loving creator doesn't make it that there is no such thing as an intelligence behind it because it doesn't stop us from claiming artificial intelligence. We like to think ourselves as intelligent and we like to think as our, ourselves as intelligent machines that somehow just put it put itself together by bil billions of millennia and just synchron synchronistic accidents stumbling and, st and bashing each other together right because if you extend our dna and just put it uh you know create this little ribbon of dna it goes to jupiter and back who knows how many times right and yet we say, well, it's just coincidence. It's just some um, arbitrary, uh, self-preserving mechanism that just seeks its own survival in this dark, uh, empty cosmos of nothingness, of black matter and dark matter. And it just uh, came together. And it's just, just code that pumped out just by following the laws of physics and somehow knew how to communicate. So... Yes, your DNA knows communication. It knows that it's a language in itself and it pumps out the proteins and things that we call little things and tiny, tiny biological bash machines. But it's just, a pre, it was a precursor to what would one day become the word that could be spoken. But until then, there's multiple other ways of communication and other, other forms of understanding that just because we don't understand it yet quite yet doesn't mean it's there it's just there trust us it's there and we're tapping into it with our multi-quantum computers and we're dabbing into multiple densities of you name it plateaus and layers just like an onion of different dimensions and don't worry they're there just they're there you just can't see them but we're tapping into them okay and it's called the gravitron and it's called cern and it's called all the bash electrons, neutrons, and protons, and bash nebulas of nothing, but they're there somehow, and it's awesome. And that's and that's where we just bow down our, our heads, and somehow we're going to bring forth something that's artificially intelligent that's greater than us. Who knew? Who knew, people? And that's going to be amazing. It's going to be, be transcendent. It's going to change everything. In the blink of an eye, everything will change, and don't worry. You can still hate Christianity and hate your savior because it's just a myth, right? Just it's a myth, people. And but believe in our densities and believe in our invisible reality of magic and believe in our invisible phenomenon of supernatural bashes that we just use in the dark and swivel and chant. And do meditative poses that somehow spark our DNA to just metamorphosize into the invisible bash of nothingness. And just somehow you see the light of your aura. And then you can use it to heal and bash and smash and smash and smash and smash. Amazing. So let's listen into one of these propon proponents of worshipping and man manipulators of the so-called light. Our guest, Mr. Santos Bonacci. Santos, how are you, sir? Oh, uh, after that very, very kind and humbling uh, and loving introduction, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, great. Wow. <laughs> thank you so much, Jaron. And uh, is it Missa? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you so kindly. That's very kind. I'm, I appreciate that very, very much. Like I said, sometimes you've got to stand back in awe of, you know, uh, you rank up there with me with Jordan Maxwell and some of the other you know, greats that um, simply I can't believe sometimes when I watch your stuff how, how much you've got in your head. It's uh, impressive. So very nice to have you on. There's so much. I okay, so for right off the bat, I mean, not right off the bat, a few minutes in because he, he spent probably three and a half minutes just buttering this guy up, buttering him up, pr praising him. 
wow, I don't know how you keep all that bash in your head. I don't know. You're just so wise. You're just so amazingly intelligent. Oh, and the guy's like, yes. Oh, my goodness. It's just so humbling. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So just praising men and other men and then just boasting and putting each other up and just patting each other in the back and just saying, wow, teach us more. I want to ask and uh, so much I want to discuss. Um, first, I want to talk to you kind of about religion, because for my wife and I, um, it's actually kind of rare that we ever meet somebody who shares our beliefs. So real quick, I'll just summarize. It. OK, so it's really rare for people to share his beliefs and he's about to describe it. OK, and just think about it, because to me, it seems like what he's about to describe is actually what the main philosophy, if you will, is out there. And just because people don't call themselves a label and identify themselves with a particular, you know, cultish religion, because it isn't a religion, what he's about to describe, but just because they don't label themselves as it, it, it doesn't mean that they don't practice it in their daily lives. And it truly is a philosophy of the world. It truly is a philosophy of self-help, self-development, self-saving, self-loving, self-serving. And ultimately, self-boasting, right? And pushing one another towards some sort of euphoric confidence, some cosmo cosmological bash, powerful, you know, uh, entropy of energies that's just going to bash you and just, you know, set catapult you into the next reality of your next higher being. And blah, 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 blah. What's going on? Is that and then you can tell us if we're on the same page but that you know each of us carries a divine piece of the you know a piece of the divine that divine spark and that religions are meant to confuse and rob us of that divinity and that the bible is basically a a great book but a hidden book of kind of veiled astrology or astro theology if you will and we believe that uh, we are our own saviors that you know we got to drop the ego and realize that you know who we are inside and uh, promoting truth and love and not being on the lookout for a savior because um, I know my wife and I both think that there's no savior coming. It's it's already here. It's us. And so and then we also think the earth is flat. So are, <laughs> are we actually talking? Uh -huh, and they laugh. They laugh it off. Right. So just it's very interesting to me that it's 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 a compounded fracture, if you will. It It's it's not just one blow to the bone. It's multiple. That's happening here. So it's they're they're coming down with a sledgehammer on any notion of divinity while yet still claiming that they acknowledge some divinity. And they're saying that we all we all have this spark of divinity in us. We all know that, but somehow Religion and bash this, this is, is is made to just oppress and bash control us and hide it from us. Really? Because even what this person is saying comes from, a, a, it is a religion. So the religion of light, right? Hidden knowledge. What this guy, what this guy calls astrotheology and syncretism is an amal amalgamation as the bash web as the web divides it am an amalgamation of different religions cultures or schools of thought that's exactly what it relies on religions <laughs> so it, the guys like saying uh yeah guys i'm not religious but i subscribe to religious the amalgamation of religions what does that even mean and that the whole purpose is to get rid of the ego or put it in check, somehow being the rider on the mule, and then you have mind over matter. And I mean, this is just amazing. Talking to somebody <laughs> that uh, shares <laughs> or beliefs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to agree with that uh, totally, totally. Um, that's essentially what syncretism teaches. It's, uh, it's showing how to sync things up. You see, we're looking for how to divide. Mm -hmm. And that's the modus operandi of good old... Oh, notice how he said it. We're looking how to divide. 
so they're thinking to be God. Because God is the only one who can bring forth into manifestation, meaning he know, he's the only one that can divide the light from the darkness. Who knew? Rome, uh, London, D.C., uh, and that gang of um, uh, corporate thieves that have stolen, really, all of our, um, over the last couple hundred years at least, anyway, since Copernicus, they've stolen our true um, uh, cosmologies and, you know, understandings and knowings of our place in the universe and how it works. And we all understood that um, the, the creation is produced by light and light is energy. And how that energy manifests is how and, and, and how good we can interpret the manifestation of that energy um, is um, grants us a more consciousness and more ability and more divinity. And so understanding the nature of light, God is light, um, source light, uh, we will really just expand our consciousness. So the saviour is in the light, and the light is in knowing and intelligence. Uh, there's nothing more virtuous than intelligence, wisdom, and love. Uh, that's the trinity, the holy trinity. But intelligence has been forsaken um, due to the false prophets that have put themselves in the place of teachers and are dumbing down the people deliberately. So essentially what I'm doing, uh, Jaron, is I'm just um, helping people to see the beautiful, beautiful wisdom that we had from the ancients. It was syncretic, it was um, unifying, and it was um, it permeated the whole universe and then came what I call the infestation of the demons. Um, okay, so, wow. And... Two hours and 41 minutes of it. Amazing. But <clears throat> he's saying a lot while saying nothing. So he's claiming to boast. He boasts about the ancients and how they understood that it was all energy and that and that, and that intelligence comes through light and knowing how the light is and how you can administer and manipulate it, it's, it increases, bash, this, this, and you become some sort of super god. So, of course, this guy will admit, the, the, he has to admit that he believes in the su supposed supernatural. He does not deny it, and no wonder is because he's a wizard. He's a wizard, just like Janice and Jambres from the Pharaoh, of the Pharaoh. They could s somehow produce, reproduce the miracles that Aaron and Moses were performing until it came to making insects out of dust, which they could not produce, and they admitted that, okay, these guys do represent the true God. So there comes there comes a dis, uh, an exposition of power because um, these teachers or whatever, and I remember I used to follow this guy years ago when I was frustrated with how the world worked, and this is before putting any sort of attention to the word of God. This was purely when I was um, in a supposed search for truth and this and that, right? And I came across this guy's videos. And at the time, they were, this guy was like in the fringes and, you know, he was presenting very ca kind of uh, compelling information because he was attacking, you know, the the Vatican and this and that and presenting all sorts of things that kind of you're like, whoa, OK, I can see how that links to that and this. And. Of course. He. Worked in the fringes and is now being put forth in to another spectrum, right? So the. Now I understand that that's how it works. They they build up somehow their 
their doctrine. They they refine it somehow in the fringes, and then somehow they're put forth, pushed as necessary. And they have multiples of him Those doing who the same from... thing with different presentations, different formats, but doing the same work. They call it the great work. And they all notice how this guy, the other, the guy interviewing him, made reference to Jordan Maxwell, as one of the greats. And they're all occultists, right? They all worship the light and boast in the in the in enlightenment of what that is to them. Because I would consider what they teach falling into this. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded. They couldn't get enough of their complexity, right? And they pat each other on the back and they say, Wow, I can't believe that all that is inside of your head. You're so high. You're so enlightened. High-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And this guy will not, he, he won't shy away from saying that he's a practitioner of Tantra. And t Tantric sex and this, this. Uh, and he's like, yeah, it's all about pleasures and you don't have to waste your sacred fluids. Just use, hone it. It's a practice. And it's a way to just increase your energy and increase your consciousness and yeah, blah, blah. So it's all just about pleasure, physical. And you're like, yeah, why would God give me a body if it wasn't to just maximize its pleasure? Why? Huh? Riddle me this. Riddle me that. And riddle me this. And I get to do whatever I want. My body, my choice. Leave me alone. And I love Thoth and his teachings of the green tablets, emerald tablets, and this, this, and that. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Okay, so they will speak. They will speak of godliness and they will portray and in appearance as having godliness. Yet they deny God. They deny the God of the, the, of, of salvation. They deny the Holy Spirit. They deny the Son of God, who is the image of the invisible God. They deny Jesus Christ as the Son of God. They will say, yeah, well, probably he was a historical figure, but we are the Savior. Religion has just used and created fairy tales to oppress you. And bash and this and that and this and this and that and this. And the Bible, sure, it's a, it's a book of wisdom, but it's corrupt. It's corrupt. It's corrupt. So where do the teachings of these people come from that are somehow infallible? If, if they are proponents of some knowledge that somehow has been oppressed and hidden, what is the source of that knowledge that somehow is incorruptible, that somehow is truth, that somehow does produce what man is longing for, right? I mean, it's just con uh, contradicting. They deny the wisdom of a loving father, of, of a Holy Spirit, yet th they say that there is a a true beautiful holy science <laughs> that somehow isn't corruptible or it isn't in any shape way or form inherently flawed to them it's it's it is holy to them it is their own religion unto themselves to them it is their god the archons and this, 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 and the heavenly bodies and this, this, this. and But somehow they, they do not question where that knowledge comes from. They're like, no, 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 well, ancients knew about it. So I believe the ancients. I believe the ancients. 
And how dare you tell me that they were just men and corrupt and they wrote it? So therefore I won't believe it because it was written by men to just somehow control us. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. That's religion. Okay, let me change my mind. Let me just rephrase my what I said and, and actually say, no, no, no. Okay, guys, this knowledge is somehow just inspired by d the entities that are in the different dimensions. But no, 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 no. It, it's not the same thing as a spiritual god that has intelligence. No, no, no. It's many gods and many entities, but there's no need for a one loving god, you know, who sent his son to redeem man. No, 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 no. That's just a fairy tale. Jesus Christ never resurrected. We are the resurrection. We are the ones that come to life when we are practitioners of the light. And when we sit down and get hemorrhoids and just hum and moan and say all these phrases and just incant spells and bash this, we are the wizards. We are the witches. We get to decide our future. So shut up. Sit down and learn. Just learn the wheel. Learn the wheel that is a serpent and bash. Just learn to stare at the sun. And learn how to read the stars because according to the stars is how your person is. And that's wisdom, people. Aries is your head and bash Pisces is your feet. And you just bash go like a serpent and you, you just do the worm. Do the worm and in and out and the moon and the bash and the sun. And yes, yes, yes. It's just a bunch of sun worship and moon worship. But don't worry. That is the holy science. That is syncretism. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe and blah, blah, blah. Catch me next week when I talk about the other orbits and the Norbits of nothing. So you can clearly see their, their animosity, their hatred towards God the Father and, and the Holy Son. The sinless man who walked on earth and revealed once and for all. Redemption, salvation, the truth, the way, and the life. They hate him. And they put in place their substitute, their savior. This to them, this wheel and the knowledge it represents is their savior. It's the serpent. They love the serpent. And it's embedded in everything that they teach. In their anatomy, they're like, yeah, the serpent is my spine. Yeah, well, the, the, my skull represents where Jesus Christ was, uh, the story where he was crucified. And that's the sacred fluid that just bashes and gives me enlightenment. Shut up. And I, I get that when I just friction my genitals and just don't climax. And then I do climax, but without expelling my fluids. And that's just amazing. Okay. So move, let's move on from that smash because it gets worse. Because all this is to say, we are living in 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 the age in the living realm where the word of God is now openly just smacked down instantly. Anybody who um, just faintly gives inclination that you might give validity to the word of God, you're instantly shamed. You're instantly put down. You're 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 told you're somehow a hate. You're you're a promoter of hate. You're a promoter of bigotry. You're a promoter of just oppression and bash and sexism and this this and that and just all sorts of uh, phobias and bash this, this and bash, bash, bash. All the while, they get to boast on how their religion of syncretism is the true knowledge. Just because somebody talks about the flat earth and, whoa, yeah, didn't you know, guys? That's the truth. Knowing that the, the, that the earth is flat or a sphere isn't anything that saves. It just provides a mechanism by which to either fall further into deception or to break out of the spell that make, made you question or that made you look for truth. That would be part of what I would say 
um, got me into seeking information such as that guy because everything around that I observed in the world just became a farce. It's like a child that when he recognizes that everybody or most adults are hypocrites. But then somehow they themselves, the child grows up and they become a hypocrite themselves. So it, it's many people f forget and just abandon their apparent fervor and just appetite for truth. Meaning everyone here is deprived of the word of God that saves and that makes a man whole and is given all sorts of reasons why to pursue other avenues and other paths that leave you even more void. Because if every man were honest with himself, he would admit that he is void and that somehow the shell of what he's created and the boast of his beliefs are what sustains him, whether they be of a partial understanding of deity or, or somehow higher being of self and this, 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 and the other, or a complete denial and just say, I'm just a, I'm just a flesh eating bash, nothing that just, it's utter darkness when you die, right? So both are, are completely, both equally as in denial because the God of salvation is the God of truth. And, and anyone who seeks him and has him as a place of refuge will inevitably have peace because in him is wisdom and understanding that man lacketh. And the, the flesh is in enmity with that wisdom and understanding because the flesh is seeking for its own. And everyone who denies the Father is participator with what, what I'm about to read. They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who hath said, with our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? This describes anybody who professes to be a higher consciousness, expansive light, expansive consciousness. They believe that, you know, the power of the word that they and the power of attraction, right, and the power of positive thinking. They believe this. They believe that there are that they prevail with their own tongue, with their own words. They are Lord. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I rise. I will arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of the earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. For the fruit of his mouth a man's belly is filled. With the harvest from his lips he, sh he is satisfied. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So um, the word of God recognizes and is giving insight 
and then another place is you know we are either um, condemned or or saved by our words. Or uh, I'm, I might be uh, mix, misspeaking, but through our words, are we justified or we're judged in a sense? Or every word that we speak is not hidden. So nobody can deny the power of the word and who knew that it would be the reason why most of us would defend free speech or this or this or that because who wants to be kept from speaking right in the sense of we see that as somehow an act of violence a threat if somebody is t if is if somebody's apparent right to speak is taken away somehow we see that as a crime a violation well do we even understand what the word is because people seem to think that they know what it is and they boast about how Affir uh, affirmation and positive thinking and this, this and that is somehow it's embedded in their philosophy and in their religion and their, in their notions of spirituality and higher self and lower self and this, this and the other ne negative thought and positive thought. But somehow they deny it when it comes to the authority of the wisdom and understanding through the word. So whose authority is it? Is it man's authority that, that gets to decide, right? On the power of the word. Because the power of the word only serves to uh, rec recognize the authority and sovereignty and righteousness of God or to justify and convince others to deny God and to just worship men and do as you whatever you want because it's you can't hide from it the, either it's one or the other because everything around you is intelligence everything outside and inside of you is intelligence whether you see it as just materially or immaterial all of it And this is another thing that I find interesting because there's many places where I've not only seen this information once, but people cl that claim, well, the Earth is is uh, just a, a living organism. It it's, uh, represents the eyeball or represents this or it's somehow this or the other. Or, um, you know, Ga the notion of Gaia. So somehow the Earth is a living entity this and this and that and bash this and the other I mean endless but for the body is not one member but many but it's a body so the body is not one member but many members but part of one body if the foot shall say because I am not the hand I am not of the body is there is it therefore not of the body and if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it has pleased him. And if there were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members yet but one body? 
And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem not to be more feeble as are necessary, are necessary, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness, for our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lacketh that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And of course, Christ is the head of the body. And the head of Christ is the Father. God. So this is beyond denial. Even though a man can come to deny this wisdom and accept man's wisdom that will tell him, ah, actually, no. I choose to believe anatomy because anatomy tells me the names of the bodies and the muscles and the ligaments and the joints and bash, 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 smash. But we that just means that we continue to deny the intelligence of how it all fits and is joined together and the increase that brings about that manifestation that we call the body. So... <clears throat> the body in itself, whether it's the human body or the body as the church or the members of the body of Christ, you know, living stones, as the Bible calls it, it's all coming together, right? It's all, we do not engage with this life independently. We are not of our own. We are either in harmony with the body or in disharmony. Or against it, rather, right? So we might consider being against it as just in denial, being in denial. But of course, the Creator, God the Father, knows. He knoweth from the beginning who would betray Him, who would be against Him. And He is the only one that gets to create vessels onto honor and onto dishonor. Because only He can bring forth life for he is love the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle of the sun, for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven, and his, cir his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yeah, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is a servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep 
back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Yes, amen. Another psalm which is amazing. Glory to God. Amen. Yes. Right? So, the astronomer slash astrologer will boast, right, about the wisdom and, and knowledge of the events in the skies we call stars the body the heavenly host the sun moon and the stars and the wandering stars etc 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 and people like the person i i showed here are boasting about the ancient understanding and the boasting of that knowledge however they don't seem to want to admit that that knowledge is spoken against by God in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament speaks of how uh, Israel was to stay away from those who make the sun and the moon and the, and the wandering stars gods, right? Making gods out of them or making effigies or this, this or that or worshiping them. There is, there is a clear distinction between um, what God speaks about concerning the heavenly host. For it, it, it cannot be denied that the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Who knew that that cannot be denied? Yet, when people go out and make gods out of this or or somehow hold this knowledge or understanding in uh own or make uh or, or worship the this glory and make gods out of them then that's where man runs into darkness because we're to revere the Father, not the heavenly host, not to the lights in the sky, not to the sun in his circuit, not to the moon in her orbit or her, her, her circuit. And why is it that his word is to, to be sought out instead of go find gold, right? To be desired. Are they then gold? Right? The, the Lord's judgments are true and righteous. Amen. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. Yes. So where what is the source of our life, our purpose? whether we get to claim it to be a righteous purpose or not. No, there is a purpose to all of it. And just because we have been, our conscious are being seared, right? And everybody is turned into an apathetic golem, right? And to some, some sort of numbed down, cynical, just critical 
agitator amongst men, all the while boasting some sort of virtuous, some sort of virtue in relative um, mindfulness, relative acts of kindness, relative empathy. And crying when those relative empathies do not match up with what we see happening in the world. And we, and we cry and we smack our heads and say, how is it even possible that these injustices are going on when we're supposed to be the most enlightened? Yeah, AI, I, I hate the word AI called artificial intelligence. I call it Alibaba intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Because might might end up being true. You never see? know. See exactly. Um, might end up being true. The Alibaba intelligence, brought to you by syncretism and all the bash occult teachings of the East and of mysticism and bash all the all the mystics and and hidden gurus of ancient times and all the ancient magi and all the wizards and witches and sorcerers and warlocks and bashes and this is this 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 because things like this the people that were made um icons right movie legends had a beginning right the boy who saw through, right? And walls. Ah, uh, he can see through walls, can he? So this kid can see through walls, and it gets him into trouble. Hello, doctor. Hello, boy. I expect you know me. Yes, I seem to have seen you somewhere. Well, that's good then. I'm glad you know the room. It's a splendid room for light, isn't it? For light. discovering things. For seeing through things. So you see through walls, Ernest? Yes, Doctor. Ever since church time yesterday. Do you like it? Seeing through walls? Oh, it's not bad at all. It's interesting, you know. I see so much more. Of course. You see the truth. I suppose it does happen to people sometimes. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, is there, Doctor? It seems to be upsetting my parents too. So you see the truth. But let's let's see what th this guy's definition of truth is. Terribly. It would. Your mother brought you to me to be cured. Is it as serious as that, Doctor? No, it's not serious at all, Ernest. And I will cure you. You're quite certain you see through walls. She's trying to do it. It's too thick. <laughs> She's now putting it in her shopping bag. Splendid, Ernest. Splendid. Ernest, you're probably not familiar with the truth. The truth is incompatible with your present surroundings. Now, don't try to answer me. The truth is incompatible with your current surroundings. Hmm. So somehow the the inner truth of your capabilities do not match up to your surroundings, right? So this is occultism. So people worship in the dark, and and they boast about their abilities or, or their rituals in the dark. And they coven with one another and they have allegiances with one another and they work for a common cause but in behind the scenes because they say that, well, it doesn't match up to the other and others won't actually accept you. Ernest? Your curiosity has led you to seek a truth with which you are not from day to day familiar. Well, that's quite admirable. 
I have no intention of curing you. You're incurable. But you just said. Let's make a pact, you and I. Ernst? This is an eyeball right here. You will promise me here and now never to mention seeing through a wall to your father or mother. Never to mention it, indeed, to anyone in Steeple. But that would be a lie. A lie. In defense. A lie in defense of your truth? In defense of truth. Wow. Statue, right away. The fact is, Ernest, even if you did mention it, no one would believe you. Nowadays, people are educated out of believing in things that don't happen. That's deplorable, because a wise man will tell you that things don't happen as often as they do happen. I don't see through walls more often than I do see through walls, come to think of it. Bravo, my boy. Well, now for a test. Your mother will want to know if you are cured. So he's saying that education has blinded men to acknowledge what is actually going on? Okay, so education has served its purpose, right? Because what people call knowledge today is just this, books, knowledge, things that you can regurgitate and reproduce when given an exam. Or if you're carried out to dissect this eyeball, you, you first study how to do it and then you practice it and okay, now you're a professional. Or hey, you can sit down people and listen to their problems, okay, now you're a professional. And this and this, and wow, you can pr prescribe and bash other medications and pharmacia to other people, okay, now you're a professional. Or what? You make a living out of portraying other bash characters and stock characters upon stock characters? Okay, now you're a professional. And that's knowledge, apparently. But that knowledge has given man the arrogance or the or, or the proudfulness to just deny what is actually going on, apparently, to this guy. And that's why people hide it. And they're like, ah, no, no, no. Okay, I don't actually see through walls. And I mock that. Even though I am a practitioner of those things, I will mock it and deny it and bash it just because it'll boast me further and just give me that advantage over others. And I will join the secret clubs of this and, and I am the part of the actual influencers of bash a carnal world of just ple pleasure and bash high-mindedness. And we are the true saviors of the world because only our superpowers bring forth a better reality somehow. Right? No. This is how Satan works. We understand each other. Right? Making deals behind Good boy. closed doors. Good boy. And now he brings out his mother and makes him lie. Okay, so that is just outstanding. Because Lucifer is the greatest mystery of symbolism according to uh, Manly P. Hall. The secret knowledge of the Rosicrucians concerning Lucifer is nowhere so plainly set forth as in these plates, which virtually reveal his true identity, a carefully guarded secret about which little has been written. Lucifer is represented by the number 741. Blah, 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 blah. Bob does not give a complete exposition of the fifth Dean Charts to have done so would have been con contrary to the principle of Kabbalistic philosophy. The deeper significance of the symbol is revealed only by profound study and contemplation. So these teachings are out there, these, these notions, these abilities to manipulate, right? And supposedly coming through your own uh, meditation and study. So just as you come to have writer's block or just da 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 and all of a sudden you you're you're flooded with inspiration or you finally got a glimpse of how to resolve something or you get some sort of um new found uh <clears throat> perspective where does that come from and you say well from the ether from consciousness man it's just bash i went to my higher self and the astral planes of bash no that that all is coming from somewhere it just doesn't just originate by some chemical synapses either to to say so is just pure denial pure um relinquency to accept 
that which is obvious and choose to just remain in a, a, an apparent uh, pit of mud that you claim to be so delightful. And other people will uh, take advantage of that because they love people to deny um, their loving creator because it keeps them believing in things like this. Barely getting any information out, basically, with speech. Right, to boast about how you can, we're, we're coming, we're at the cusp of some bash artificial intelligence that's somehow going to change everything, and we're supposed to fear it. Fear it, fear it, fear it, fear it, fear it! Fear it! miles above the earth it's up to he, from where he was he said it was 20 miles away and he said he could see the thing so he, that's what got him thinking he saw me posting stuff on Facebook and stuff you know people seeing stuff they're not mountains if the earth were truly flat there would be really hardly any limit you would be able to stand at the top of the Empire State Building and look towards Chicago a mere thousand miles away and see the lights of Chicago at night Really, dude? Scientists, you notice. That's a scientist there. One of the things, the criticism I hear about this conference and stuff is, well, there's not a scientist among them, no PhDs. Look, I consider that an advantage, frankly. Okay, that's, that's, what, that's what it was. He says, I consider that an advantage. Amazing. So anybody who says that is either going to be seen as a denier of truth because they're apparently denying the titles and accolades and experiential knowledge that can come forth out of some entire no learning, some higher intelligence that we call academia. And they say, how dare you poo-poo? How dare you poo-poo on our experts and our, our, on our PhDs? Because they are the... Uh, ambassadors and the distributors of truth and knowledge and wisdom how dare you and this guy's like no i consider it an advantage not to have these people amongst the suppo supposed uh flat earth body why because it's either going to be trusting in god and what is evident because people that um come to study or or eat from the body of Christ, meaning his word, the word of truth, they will inevitably come to recognize that the wisdom and understanding of the Father is beyond any knowledge of man in the sense of it's the only thing that makes whole. For it is the only thing that is actually a key to the love that you say you're seeking in the world. It is the key that opens the door, the door which is Christ. It, it opens you to recognize the fullness of God, that all there is in the earth and the fullness thereof are God's. And we are part of that. We have belonging in God. We are living stones in the body of Christ. Everything that we have ever come to love or recognize as love is good in the sense of the love that we call affection is tainted by our own perception. Yet the no the notion of an unconditional love that transcends and forgives only comes from God. And that is what restoreth. That is what heals. Not our own self boast and self teachings of self forgiveness and this, 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 and the other. As much as we wanted to make it that, or as much as we wanted to make it about just syncretism and about just the magnetism, because. <clears throat> This is what is very astounding. Not 
tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. Interviewing all to grab all your my brother from a Eddie may join up and what? On Spokane at the Spokane Comedy Club and then May about is what did that what does that mean? The Egyptians had that as their main axiom. That was their motto. And most of the world did as well. The Greeks echoed it as well with the atomic theory. So um, everything is atomic. The problem is most people don't know what an atom is. And when you learn and know what an atom is, it's, it is a trinity, a neutron, a proton, an electron, you will find that that trinity transfers into every other field of human knowledge in religion. So even that that he's saying is the theory, the theory of the electron, the theory of the atom. Just as the theory of the heliocentric model was put in place because it explained what the observed phenomena is in the heavens, just as prior to that was the apparent so-called geocentric view in place, which also described it. But somehow, just because now it's the... <clears throat> the heliocentric model is the commonly accepted one. Somehow it's seen as the truth and anything before that was just somehow obscure and just bashed. And this guy, when I first started uh, looking into his information, he boasted and used the heliocentric model. And then after the, the supposed flat earth information came out, he disappeared for a while and then came out smashing and, and accepting the flat earth model and saying, hey guys, it actually works better. So somehow he did acrobatic gymnast g g gymnastics and kind of like metamorphosized into the flat earth narrative and now it boasts in it. And that's why the other Jaren guy was interviewing him and bash, 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 bash. So he doesn't care that his teachings prior to him now accepting the flat earth, flat earth involved a, a, a globe, infinite space kind of idea. And now he describes just the notion of a flat earth, but somehow he's going to give his version of it because even flat earthers would admit, well, we don't all believe the same thing. We have different interpretations of this. If there's a bash this or bash this or bash, 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 bash. We're just puddles and there's other puddles in ice and there, we just have to go and explore. Nah, nah. So, I mean, there's, it's just another portal to confusion if one isn't rooted in the truth the way in the life it's called the father the son and the holy spirit oh my god in science it's dielectricity magnetism and electricity the three field modalities of the universe everything is magnetic in fact god is magnetism most people will laugh at that because they see little magnets pushing each other and attracting and they think, oh, this is a clever little powerful thing. And it's Energy is conscious. Energy is intelligent. Nothing is not. And that's what God... Nothing is not. So this guy admits intelligence, but then he says it's just energy. Hmm. And just like that, he just brushes off that and ha nope, don't worry. Energy was neither created nor destroyed. It just is, was, at, forever was, and just that's it. That's it, people. Welcome to my club. Step into my office. God is. God is. It is magnetism. So people are going to see that. Not only uh, I'm, I'm not going to be theorizing. It's not theories. It's not my theories. I'm not smart enough to make theories. Uh, it's just proof. And He's not smart enough to make theories, but yet he believes the theory of the electron and the theory of the atom and the theory of that and this and all the names that all his idols gave him. And extensive, exhaustive, comprehensive proof, simple, that nature is simple. And we come from the field, the cosmos. Who knew that everything in so-called nature, it is simple and it all goes back to a creator. Everything that we can come to observe 
it's self-evident that there is a creator, that there is an intelligence behind it. And this guy will say, yeah, but it's not God as we know it in the sense of some bash guy in the sky, some bearded man in the sky. No, no, no. It's magnetism, guys. The field and the field is what most people call God. Right. And the field is dielectric black light, which has its opposite and equal co-eternal white light, the yin and yang, which is magnetism. So there in the yin and yang is the secret. Basically, I'll be starting with that. Oh. The simple things of light. Right. So he's putting um, darkness as the co-opposite of the light. That you can't have darkness without the light and light without the darkness, is that what he's saying? When in John it talks about there is no darkness in God, for God is light. And in the, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And God was the light of men. And the darkness understood it not. Comprehended it not. So the darkness comprehended not the light, the darkness is not the light. In God is no darkness. And God divided the light from the darkness. So the no the notion that the yin and the yang, right, the perfect balance, is of is is a very um simple kind of uh, um, image-based logic because you can see it. And you're like, okay, it makes sense. You know, you have an equal amount of darkness and an equal amount of light and somehow they're opposing and just bosh, bosh, bosh and it's a catapult into each other and there's a yin and a yang. Yeah, okay, I get it. I understand it. So where does the idea of and this is where they say, well, that's why there's no evil and or good. It's just a synthesis, people. We are the synthesis. Because the darkness doesn't mean it's bad. It just means, well, we have to navigate with the darkness in our own psyche, in our own beings. And we get to assimilate that and make the serpent rise. We are to use the both energies to maximize our transcendence, people. No. Right, and... Sound and magnetism to so explain what, everything. What do you say to religious people that uh, that believe that Jesus was the literal son of God? God uh, got Mary pregnant. Joseph, how pissed was he? What do you? What do you? Who's <laughs> more oh, he, pissed? He than, gives a gang sign. Who's more pissed than? How pissed was he? What do you? What do you? He just did it right there again. Uh, got Mary pregnant. Joseph. How pissed was he? What do you? What do you? <laughs> who's more pissed than? Who's more pissed than Joseph? <laughs> who buys that story, by the way? Again, who buys that story? <laughs> you just bought the idea that the Trinity was the proton, neutron, and by wash whatever he said. Electron. He's like, whoa. Well, okay. <laughs> no, but but what do you say? Because there's religious people that follow, the, like, it literally. And I don't know what, I, for me to say I know what God is, I don't know what God is. I believe Jesus was a person who was super knowledgeable, and then later the Catholic Church or whatever made him into a superstar rock star, and that's not really what he wanted to be, and they just did it just for whatever reason. So the Catholic Church is after So people, uh, this is where a lot S Santos, he started bashing the the Vatican, and he bashed it because to him that's Christianity. That's where Christians uh, Christianity comes from. And he's like, well, but then if you look at the Bible, it's actually an astrological book and this this and that. But then the Vatican just bashed it. So which is it going to be? It's either completely false and just deny it, or you're going to just cherry pick and say, well, only if P Manly P Hall 
teaches me the Bible, then I will I will accept it. Otherwise, it's just wrong and it's bigoted and it's just fairy tales. But if P. Manley Hall teaches it, then he teaches me the symbolism behind it. And, and Lucifer is just the bash wizard of symbolism. And don't worry, it's okay. For a reason, um, what do you say to those people who believe that uh, Jesus was actually the son of God and God impregnated Mary? Joseph lost his mind. What? Who hated God more than Joseph? Anybody? <laughs> Joseph probably started the Illuminati. You know what I mean? He probably started Satanism. Yeah. Great, great question. Before I start, just remember one thing. Uh, Joseph is, in the Greek system, Saturn. Saturn? His son, Jesus, is Jupiter Zeus, Jesus. Thank you, Christians, for preserving the name of Zeus in Jesus. Oh, my God. And Mary... The consort of Kronos or Saturn, Rhea, is Maria. And I'll get to, I'll get to how you get Saturn from Joseph <laughs> in a minute. So when you when But who cares, right? Because that's that's the premise of, of this whole doctrine. And who knew they needed to borrow from the Bible to make their story? They're like, get this guys, Joseph is actually Saturn and this, this and that and, and to them um, the, what they call Christianity is, to them, a book that was manipulated and created, or that th the Bible stole from pagan beliefs or stole from actual truth to create their own religion called Christianity. No. That's what Satan has taught. That's what the whole Enlightenment age brought forth. And it's nothing new under the sun. This knowledge was known in the days of Jesus Christ. And before that, sat Satanism or the, the worship of um, gods and the flesh predates Christianity. For the Bible tells us that Cain was a son of Satan. He hated his brother because his brother's works or his deeds were righteous or they were worthy and he and his was not so cain was a follower a worshiper of the flesh he was carnally minded while his brother abel was spiritually minded so what is going on deceivers upon deceivers Um, I don't know if it's worth to get into. Well, redox, right? Described as it's a code open source JavaScript library for managing application state. It is most commonly used with libraries such as React or Angular for building user interfaces similar to and inspired by Facebook's Flux architecture. It was created by Dan Abramov and Andrew Clark. Abramovich. Sound familiar? Abramov. Yes, it does sound. And Redox means what? Brought back. Revived. So, in context, into what this guy's talking about, Alibaba, Bash, intelligence, it's it's all in your face. It's and people are trying to warn about it, guys. This guy's warning about uh, AI and, and the dangers of uh, artificial intelligence and this or whatever, or create or just whatever. He's playing a part, and this guy too, but it's all just in your face. It's already here. Satan is amongst us deceiving because everything around us is either going to lead us and snap us in half, meaning split us open to the truth, or it's going to help us boast in our own pride. So this guy started out um, making videos about his interpretation with um, 
supposed science, physics, right? Bringing about examples of how, to him, his notion of the geocentric or the heliocentric model was just bashed. And he made his whole uh, debut on the internet making claims about how, using physics, he was coming to be convinced that the Earth was actually flat. Amazing. Then he came to some bash place in his life where he just had some whatever, led by some woman that convinced him to come and now he's he's now this is the kit ch chick uh, kitchen <laughs> chicken coop and there's some bash boards that that's he's convincing you that this is where he lives now amazing but what's interesting is that before he just disappeared from the internet or whatever he made a claim that's all it really is remembering their roles it comes down to just men remembering their roles okay so he 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 was saying guys it, it's not about what the shape of the earth is it's about men remembering what their roles are that's all it really is on the way up here i drove this time someone whose work i respect a lot i won't say his name i'll leave it in the description i'll let him watch this video first and decide if he wants to be named but uh it was the first time I'd ever had a conversation with another man who feels exactly the same way I do about what a man's role is. It was amazing. Can't believe it happened on the way here either. But he and I both believe that our true role is to serve and protect women. For women to tell us what they need for themselves and our children and for us to provide. And that's it. You've seen Fire and Ice Theory. We talked about how the sun is the giver and the moon is the receiver. And classically, the, mon the, the sun is considered male and the moon is considered female. So immediately he is exposing himself for what he has come to believe in his heart, perhaps. But he's explaining how he essentially worships the sun and the moon. And he gets all his symbolism and metaphors from that and he's he believes that men are here to protect women and children and provide for them and that's it so and to him that he's like i i found my truth guys well i think we echo that and uh, the guy i talked to on the way here was burned down and that may be what happened? Weak, jealous, prideful men burned everything down so that they could take over, that they could be receivers. They, they forgot their role. They became jealous of women. And so, here we are. He also said to me that we're the grunts, in a joking way. We're the muscle, we're the strength, we're the doers, we're the kinetic. We have we wield enormous power, and as it said, with great power comes great responsibility, as I'm sure you've heard in movies. We remember our role, men. All over the world, we have greedy CEOs and banksters, and children, just because. They so, men, what are we going to do about this? Are we going to continue being slaves to these these weak men who want to be receivers, who don't want to do their true role, don't want to perform their duty? So, again, so calling to action, but with what banner? Strong men, alpha men, men that want to just serve women while not being jealous towards them. So, he after that, he just disappeared coming out saying his true beliefs about how men and, and women just coming back to their roles, not being jealous, standing up to weak men. Or are we going to stop duty and get back to it? Meeting her, I was seriously considering a life of celibacy, a spiritual path, trying to connect with the divine because I thought my, my true 
uh, motivation for all of my work was to to help everyone realize the divinity in this world within all of this beautiful stuff around us and within us that may be but uh I stopped the meter and then we we're only supposed to stay together for a little while and then I was supposed to come here okay so this reminds me of the parable of the sower right where does the seed fall on on fertile ground on stony ground on thorns so it seems to me that this person was presented with a profound yearning and unwavering kind of vigor to towards truth yet once he came through to recognize uh the mechanisms of deception perhaps that he was under then he quickly was taking up into a diff uh, a, a philosophy of wonder of the goddess and this this and that and this and this so what is going on but after a few days of my short trip of not wanting to leave she and i decided that i should at least come up here for one day so he's he's relating and i find it not so poetic but poetic at the same time that his, this whole tribulation of his has to do with a female and it almost seems that the female convinced him of something that perhaps was being worked in him yet this other person now convinced him and probably convinced him that he came up with what he ultimately decided when all the while it was her that was you know influencing him and leading him and guiding him through his kind of tribulation when perhaps in him was the opportunity to be led by the spirit of god not guided or manipulated by others so what is going on And uh, even if she decides down the road that I'm not what she wants, if I'm not the man for her, I'll be ready to give up. Amazing. I hope and I truly anyone who finds themselves in a position like this, and anybody can relate, I can relate. That is what we're supposed to do to relate and proclaim the works of the Lord. And not to cower away and be silent. But to speak boldly. Despite adversity or despite being fringed or um, accused by the world of having hateful or bigoted beliefs for the God of salvation is love all his ways and judgments are righteous we're to seek after his righteousness and recognize it and not boast in our righteousness and accept the, the rest and peace that is in Christ Jesus the Lord, who laid down his life because he has our authority to raise it up again. In so revealing that we too will rise in Christ, even though our flesh perishes. The work of God is this to believe in the one he has sent. Amen. That is the work of God. We're to believe in it. Amen. And they like to show themselves of who they are and who they serve.
And just because somebody says that they didn't intend to be displaying these signs or whatever, they're doing it. It's no coincidence. It's no accident. Just like, you know, um, in sports teams, you don't accidentally wear the jersey you wear. You wear it because you wear it to identify yourself. To distinguish yourself from the other team. Just as most of the people who frequent the interwebs know that this person was questioning um, this person, Dr. Levine. On her policy making and her decision making, when apparently... Um, Genital mutilation in children is is poo pooed on worldwide, except when it comes to um, children who claim to be the opposite sex and demand to be given the bodies that they say they want. Then it is not poo pooed, and all the while, these are the people that are pushing something they're given a platform and they are no different than this person and they're no different than this person Thanks for your work. Thanks for your input. Thanks for your just tireless work. Same as this person, right? Divide and conquer. Confuse. Deny. And just boast about some alternative that just pushes the mechanism of sinister activity which propels the day in day out groundhog day of perpetual lies when all along we have the remedy we have salvation do we receive it or do we deny it do we subject ourselves to the Lord and Savior or do we create ourselves to be the savior ourselves well i think it's self-evident what team the world is being led to play on and to declare as an enemy those who love and do the work and will of God.